No introduction. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so good afternoon and thank you for being here. I'm going to narrow down the um, AI to glaucoma and see how deep learning works in glaucoma. So why glaucoma? We know that glaucoma is a uh, second leading cause of blindness and uh, the numbers which will be affected are beyond you know, what I can calculate, one, one, two millions, I don't know how many zeros there would be. And a large number of patients are still undiagnosed. Why? Because glaucoma is not something that you can just pick up by doing a blood test. You need uh, thorough clinical examination, you need investigations, and by WHO standards, it is not something that is feasible for screening. So we do need something which is a cost-effective tool to detect glaucoma, and the thought is, can technology help? Well, just as Ashima told us about artificial learning, machine learning, and deep learning, I'm going to put it in the context of glaucoma. So artificial learning would be something like if you just uh, open up your Google uh, Assistant and say, hey, hey, Google, show me glaucomatous optic nerve, and lo and behold, you have numerous uh, optic nerve heads which are glaucomatous uh, popping up on your window. So that is artificial intelligence because that is the ability of the computer program or a machine to think and learn. Now take it a little more narrow, let's say that we feed in the data to the machine and say, okay, this is the optic nerve of the left eye, this is also the optic nerve of the left eye, and we kind of make the machine learn. And after we've made it learn, we ask, is this the optic nerve of the left eye? And the machine will say yes. So that is the subset of artificial intelligence which provides systems the ability to automatically learn and improve from uh, experience without being explicitly programmed. Take it a little more narrow, you feed in a load of uh, data, you know, huge amounts of data, and then you train the machine, and then you do a testing data, and then you have these various uh, neural networks, which again are hidden and non-hidden, and you tell, okay, this is labeled as normal optic nerve head, and this is an abnormal no optic nerve head, and the machine will then let you know which one of them is normal and which is abnormal. So uh, this diagram you've already seen. Now taking it up to the diagnosis of glaucoma. Now as we said, the glaucoma is a compilation of clinical examination data, functional data, structural tests, and more importantly, a gut feel. So once we look at any optic nerve head, we come up with at least three answers that this could be normal, it could be a glaucoma suspect, or is it a glaucomatous optic nerve head? Now we did a study wherein we used deep learning and we compared the deep learning with the glaucoma specialists and uh, an algorithm was developed. This was based on the Inception V3 architecture and developed and trained in the TensorFlow. So what this uh, uh, algorithm did was that it picked up or it was taught features of glaucomatous optic neuropathy, including neuroretinal rim, the asymmetry of CDR, the excavation of the cup, the RNFL thinning, disc hemorrhages, parapapillary atrophy, laminar rot, nasalization, and bearing of the circumlinear vessels. The input given to this algorithm was a single fundus photograph, which was resized to a 587 to 587 resolution, and it could tell whether this is a referable glaucoma. It could say whether the disc picture has no risk, low risk, high risk, or likely glaucoma. So also, it could pick up the presence and absence of the optic nerve head features that I talked about. This algorithm was trained using a uh, retrospective data set of 86,000, and then it was assessed in data set A, B, and C. And we found that the uh, area under the curve was pretty impressive. For the data set A, it was 0.945. A, uh, the data set B was 0.85, and data set C was 0.88. And the model also predicted that the things that the model picks up are some things that we look for, the vertical CDR ratio, uh, ratio the notch, RNFL defect, et cetera. Now, uh, this is one model, but there are several other models which are floating around for uh, glaucoma. The models which can identify the visual field effects, the ones which can predict the severity of the functional loss with the SD-OCT images. The gonioscopic angles can be, uh, uh, you know, it can be uh, based into uh, the 
the angle closure images using ASOCT also and tools which can predict and achieve uh, target IOPs and clinical forecasting tools. Now what are the advantages of uh, deep learning? This can automate your clinical evaluation, so a little bit of a bias can be taken away. It can reach, now this is what we think is important, is it can reach where the skilled manpower is scarce. It can improve access to eye care in high risk populations. It can help in diagnosing and optimizing management and can predict and map progression. But then, what is the future of deep learning? There are lots of things which are going in further, which is incorporating genome-based data, forecasting algorithms, early prognostications, and mapping the best management plan. There are certain uh, challenges which have already been discussed, the consent and confidentiality issues, lack of sample size, disagreement, and of course, the ethical issues. So I will leave you with these thoughts to ponder upon that what is going to be the acceptability by the doctors. We are already there. We need to act fast, like Dr. Vivek also mentioned. And also, what will be the reaction of the patients? Will the patient entrust clinical care to machines? So let's wait and see what the future holds for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Monica. Dr. Mukesh, please.